Welcome back everyone. What you're looking at here is the vacuum manifold slash vacuum chamber which our Vector LD18 uh, rotary vane vacuum pump will be connected to directly. Um, the main chamber which you also saw in an earlier video will also be connected to this manifold. Um, but as I said it's not going to be for a long time. We are going to get this thing fully functional and pumping before we even worry about doing anything with the main chamber. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done anyway. So what we'll do is go in a bit closer, talk about it in a bit more detail uh, so that you've got an idea as to what's going on here and what we're looking at. What we're looking at here is the main body of the manifold. It's made out of stainless steel 304. Uh, there is a stainless steel end cap that's going to be welded on one end. On the other end we're going to weld a KF100 flange and that's going to be a claw clamp style flange and there will also be a stainless steel end cap which will clamp onto the end to seal it off. On the top of the manifold body we will have this burden gauge connected via a um, K flange which will be welded to the main body. Um, next to that we've also got a Granville Phillips mini convectron gauge uh, that will also have a port accessing through the top here and clamped on there. On the bottom of, we'll just turn around a bit here, on the bottom of the main body we will have, if I can get this zooming done, we'll have this KF40 port welded centrally. Um, further to that we've got this um, Edwards SP40K isolation valve, uh, that will be connected in line with that port. Uh, then we've got this 100mm KF40 stainless steel hose which is flexible uh, to connect into this reducer which goes from KF40 to KF25 uh, and then from there directly to the vector pump. Um, so that from the pump here all the way through to here, um, isolation at this point through this um, isolation valve here, high throughput valve. Uh, the other things that are going to be connected to this manifold are, I'll just focus in again, we're, we're going to have another KF16 port uh, welded to the side, coming out the side here. Uh, and then we'll have two KF40 ports which we'll talk about in a second. But this KF16 port is important because that's going to help us through this valve here, KF16 valve, I think it's a HPS, yeah. HPS valve, KF16. Um, they'll be connected to that KF16 port and through this we will be able to pump down you know, any sort of chambers that we want to build um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about those later but we can make a whole variety of custom made chambers and then just hook it up to this pump it down through the manifold without having to pump down the whole main chamber which would take ages um, so yeah, it's a quick way to actually pump down a small chamber without having to connect it to the larger one. Um, while that's happening obviously these other two KF40 ports will have to be blanked off and capped uh, but that's fine. So that is pretty much the main manifold. The reason we're putting the um, open flange here is so that we can access the unit for cleaning or recovering something that's dropped in there or simply for 
doing a quick experiment that doesn't require too many feed throughs or um, you know just degassing or you know, anything for whatever reason it's a quick way to just do a quick pump down requiring no additional chambers of any sort now you probably saw this hose sitting there and you're wondering what this was all about uh, this hose here is again stainless steel it'll be connected to the port, the KF40 port that we put in the side here and this hose will actually be connected directly to the chamber uh, the main chamber now this line will serve as a roughing line uh, there will be a another KF40 isolation valve such as something like that maybe even a butterfly valve in line with this hose here so we can sh shut off the um, the roughing line and then the next line here will also be KF40 and again with another um, isolation valve in line with the hose and that will serve as the backing line to the diff or turbo pump so two KF40 ports two valves and two hoses leading one leading to the chamber the other one leading to the back end of the dip or turbo pump and next to that we'll have that KF16 um, port and isolation valve that we talked about a second ago um, that is pretty much it now the next time you see this it will be um, I guess a lot shinier we, it, you know, it's stock off the shelf about 300, 350 grit uh, surface finish it is, it is polished uh, we're going to take it down to probably you know, 1000, 1500 grit and then take it down through three compounds on the buffing wheel inside and out before they form the holes and weld all the ports on uh, and then once everything's formed and polished we'll get it electro polished and then welded together uh, there will also be a bracket on the back side for mounting this manifold to the frame uh, but apart from that I think we've covered everything this is going to be a versatile little manifold that can be used for a number of pump downs and applications Now, just a couple of notes on this uh, Granville Phillips Mini Convectron module. Uh, it does have a set point relay, which will allow us to uh, actuate any sort of function um, as a function of gas pressure. Uh, we'll talk about that more later when we actually start using it and wiring it up. Um, it does have a, a nine pin. Yeah, it's a 9 pin um, output that's where all the IOs and the power comes in and out uh, in case you were wondering what's inside those things uh, here is a bent module uh, this is actually the Convectron gauge um, the pins on the end of it there are actually I'll just zoom into that for you. These pins are actually the um, pins that go into a circuit board, um, and then obviously that circuit board does what it does, and it comes out the end there. Um, so that's what's inside them. That's the convectron gauge. Uh, a couple of other things that I haven't showed you yet are. Uh, these bags of clamps here, which I can't really get a good zoom on. Uh, here we go. They're the clamps that connect all of the KF flanges together. Um, so obviously it just swings open and then there's a wing nut tightens it all up. Uh, in between each flange pair. Uh, we have these O-rings, Viton O-rings, and the stainless steel centering rings. Uh, so I've got a whole bag of them there. 
more than more than enough for what we need. Um, and the last little thing I wanted to show you was this stuff here, Loctite 1C high sol. Uh, this is this this is really good stuff for vacuums. Um, I got a couple of boxes of this, so this is what we'll be using to make our disposable, you know, cheap, expendable vacuum chambers that we connect to that uh, KF16 valve that we talked about earlier. Um, so if you want to make something quick and cheap, custom sort of chamber for a certain experiment, uh, we can glue it together with this Loctite 1C high salt. We've seen this before, the um, frame that's going to hold the vacuum system is going to be made out of this aluminium extrusion. Uh, the legs will be made out of the 80 by 80 which you can see in the middle there. Uh, the rest of the frame will be made out of 80 by 40 which you can see on the left. Uh, the piece on the right is a 40 by 40 which we probably won't be using at this stage but we might do some add-ons to the frame later uh, in which case we might get a couple of pieces of that stuff um, so yeah I hope, I hope I've given you a bit of an understanding as to what we're building uh, as I said next time you see this manifold it should be ready to connect to the pump and do a pump down. Um, I have ordered the frame. Um, I'm just waiting on the KF100 flange for the manifold to come in so I can send it all off and get it happening. But uh, as soon as that comes in, we'll get it sent away and um, put together. And I'm hoping, you know, hopefully, within a month that we can get all that done. Um, it would be good to get it all back here and start bolting it all together and doing our first pump down. Thanks for watching.